Hey guys, it's Kendra Cordova, Spiritual Life Coach and Women's Coach. And today I want to share with you guys my story of how I reverted to Islam, how I became a Muslim. So I'm so happy. And if you guys notice, I haven't been making videos for months now. And it's because I've been going through this like internal spiritual journey. And as a spiritual life coach, like I want to have my best um, out there for you guys. And I want to have that um, stability for you guys. So while I was going through these like ups and downs, I was like, you know, I'm gonna take a quick break. We're gonna get this sorted out. And now here we are, we are back. We are rebranding and everything. And it's just, I'm so blessed, you know, um, just Alhamdulillah, I am so happy. So I want to share this with you guys. This happened over years. This took so long to finally accept Islam. So let's start at the very beginning. Ever since like middle school on, I had this interest in Islam, but I didn't really understand why. And I kind of avoided it, to be honest, because growing up in the United States, growing up in the West, Islam is like this like scary foreign thing that you, you only see in the news. And it's never good. <laughs> and so it wasn't that I necessarily believed that all those things were true. It was just I didn't know where to start. I didn't know any Muslims. And I was like, I don't know if I want to go over there, right? So I was raised Catholic and I went to Catholic church and I was just felt so connected to God all the time. But there are so many things in Christianity that I just like could not get my head around. Um, first of all, in, in Catholicism, you, I'm probably gonna get a lot of angry comments for this, but that whole like pedophilia thing, that's not a joke. That's, that is a serious thing. Um, I was sexually targeted in middle school by one of my Catholic teachers um, and wear those short skirts. And it's just, it's very odd. Um, then the whole concept of Jesus as as basically a demigod, right? Half God, half human, like he is part of God, but he's not. And um, I never got that. I was like, I mean, he's a cool teacher, but I don't get that part. Um, the whole sacrifice for our sins, like I just, I don't get it. Um, the whole concept of original sin, I was like, you guys aren't born evil. <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't understand it either. So there are just so many things that I was just, I was like, guys, I can't, I don't get this. I can't do this. That coupled with the um, misogyny that is so just ingrained into into that side of the world, I was like, I, I don't know, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. I need some personal power. I was going through a lot of turmoil in my household as well and abuse and um, it's a very long story, but I didn't have a safe place really to be myself. And so I had this dream which connected to um, actually like new age spirituality, paganism and all that. And I will be honest that that path that I took for a while helped me heal and it helped me unlock my mind and my heart so that I wasn't so afraid of things like Islam because I had this like anger towards all Abrahamic traditions because of some stuff that happened to me uh, within like the Catholic realm. But I still found myself interested in Islam, but again, kind of taking a step back or finding myself pulling closer to God again, and then just taking a step back because I was like, I can't do this. Like, I'm so scared. I, I don't want to go through this again, you know, and I don't agree with so many of these things. How How is that going to work? So I followed the New Age pagan path for about 15 years um, and still having this draw to Islam. It was crazy. So like... Um, for example, one of my major papers during my bachelor's degree was on feminist movements in Islamic states, which basically focused on the voices of women and how the like extremist Islamicist type views um, that can be like pushed and uh, create this aggression towards women isn't the the natural way of Islam. And it's like, why am I fighting for this? Like this, I'm not Muslim. <laughs> Um, but it felt very personal, and I remember my father coming to me at one point and saying, these aren't your people. And I couldn't help myself, but I was like, they are. I don't, they are. Like, I don't understand. Um, so, fast forward a few years, and I get lupus, right? So, mm -hmm. I go from being this healthy and energetic and just, you know, active mom to having to crawl to the bathroom and being too weak to stand in the shower, having to walk with a cane half the time, like I've been using my cane today. 
um, having to take all this medication, including mild chemo medication, to keep myself from getting too sick and too um, in too much pain. Uh, just on and on and on. This went on for like years, right? But last year, um, as you guys know, I made some videos. I went to the Mayo Clinic, and I got uh, my case was picked up by the Mayo Clinic. And unfortunately, they didn't give me a lot of answers. It was like, oh yeah, like we don't even know what's going on. This is crazy. Um, but while I was there, I was having this just overwhelming. Just I don't know how to explain it, but I just needed to get closer to God. I I felt lost. I felt like I needed to go on, on to a new path. I felt all of my control was like taken from me of my life. I took care of my body and I did all this and like now I'm just suffering and weak and I can't be with my kids the way I want to and I was like so lost, right? Doctors can't even give me answers. Nobody can. And at this time I was already starting to read books on Islam, right? I was like, okay. Like, I really enjoy these books on Islam. I had, like, a little dua journal that I was making dua in every day, but I didn't call myself a Muslim, right? So I go into the prayer area at the hospital, and I was like, okay, like, give me a sign, right? I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so lost. Like, help, <laughs> please. I'm, I'm open, right? And I had been like the only one in there with the exception of this one other woman who's reading the Bible and she left. So then it was just me for a while. And I was only there for like three, four minutes, like just a couple minutes. And then I get up to leave and there's this other woman that I didn't even notice came in over in the Muslim prayer area and she looks just like me. And she's praying there to Allah. And then I go outside and there was this line of Muslims with all of their prayer rugs getting ready to pray. And I was like, they looked at me like, are you, are you coming? And I was like overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, is this the sign? And so like I, I ran over to like the elevator area and I was like, I need a breath. Like this is so overwhelming. Like Islam, are you sure? Like this is what I'm supposed to do. So I'm sitting by the elevator like catching my breath. And then this like group of Muslim women come to wait for the elevator and they all stand around me. And they like look at me like, <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, like they're everywhere, like, uh, it's like in my face, you know. The lady that served me lunch that day, like, was in full, like, uh, burqa. Like, it was just like everywhere I went after that, it was just like Muslims. And so I went back to, you know, my room and I read a line in the Quran, which I have a TikTok video about. If you're not following me on TikTok, Coach Kendra, um, go follow me. But I have a video on that where it basically says, like, if Allah is on your side, um, nobody can stop you. If Allah is not, who can help you? And it just made me think of this like helpless situation I found myself in of like my health being completely out of my hands and completely in the hands of Allah. Now, for two years, I had already been connected to Muslim women and Muslim culture because I started wearing hijab. My lupus made me allergic to the sun. So I had to cover constantly, and so I learned how to dress in a very modest covering way, and I got into a uh, hijab. And so I had all these Muslim women friends, and they were just the nicest, smartest, like lawyers and doctors and whatever, uh, single moms, and they were so strong. And I, I read about Khadija, and it just opened up my heart and my mind about um, Muslim women and how strong they are and points of education. So I just kept reading the Quran and I kept like studying Islam for a few months and then I ran into the Haram police, which basically are the people that tell you you're not Muslim enough. You know, you some of your hair showing out of your hijab, you're not Muslim enough. You know, you're you wear some nail polish, you're not Muslim enough. Um, you only pray three or four times a day because you're still working on it, you're not Muslim enough. And they just go and go and go like, you can't do this and you can't do that, and what's wrong with you? And I got overwhelmed and I was like, okay, maybe I can't be a Muslim. Like, ah, I can't do this, right? So I left for like six, seven months. And then I started dating my boyfriend who I have now, um, cause finishing up a divorce. And uh, yeah, so I've been dating my boyfriend and he's a very strong Christian. Um, but he's not, you know, pushing me towards Christianity or anything. And he 
asked me to go to church with him and he had this just like light about him he had this joy he had this like connection to God and it was really what I was looking for and so I started reading the Quran again and I started looking at Islam again I started watching you know Muslim sermons and all these things and so I finally just confided in him and I was like I was almost a Muslim and then now I'm not and I'm feeling it again and I don't know what to do I have all this anxiety and on the phone he goes well will you go with me and I was like go where <laughs> and he was like to the mosque will you go with me if I go with you to the mosque and I was like sure so because he knew I was scared so he goes with me to the mosque um takes me there uh we talked to the imam and everything and then I continued studying for a while and then I was like okay I'm gonna do it so I did my shahada and now daily I study Islam and I want to start influencing that in my spiritual life coaching and my women's coaching this is just completely changed my life it's changed my heart and I just feel so blessed honestly um and I'm not perfect you know nobody is but it's something I want to share with everybody and yes I am a progressive Muslim um, and my focus is really on just like the love of Allah and the, how we can spread that love and forgiveness and the most merciful and all of that to each other so very excited I'm going to be making more videos on Islam now and spiritual life coaching and women's coaching and all of that I am back and I am excited uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, so that you can see my videos as they come out and we can go on this journey together all right I'll give you guys updates as I rebrand, reopen my website, and get all my coaching stuff together again. So I hope you guys have a great day and a great week, and I will make a video soon. Bye.